I'm not even two seconds into this episode, and I already have questions. Why does Mitch need his perpetually 12-year-old son to pack his lunch for him? And why is it in a paper sack and included with a small toy, like it's Mitch's first day of school? I fear Baywatch severely misjudged the order of father-son dynamics. I hope the other lifeguards don't give me a hard time. It's tough being a freshman. Gene Vest pose! Anyway, a gang has tagged Baywatch headquarters, and Stephanie is worried they'll be stuck in the middle of a turf war. This isn't your turf, damn it, it's mine! Easy, take it easy. Whoa, calm down, Stephanie. You're at a two, I'm gonna need you at a one. Something tells me those are the ones who should be doing this. That's something being my inner racist! So while Numi's on vacation, Mitch hired a replacement from out of town who he wants to pair up with Stephanie because he's the old maid police. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Carlos. So, you and Mitch are old friends, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Meanwhile, Hobie has become quite the enterprising young man as he exploits his A&W Cream Soda Bodyboard Competition prize by selling it off for some quick cash. Little does he know, that makes him a magnet for Latino street gangs. Is that little boy with A&W Cream Soda? A&W is delicious! Get him! See it, Holmes. <laughs> Alright, who's the asshole interrupting our truck sex? The A&W Cream Soda heist was a rousing success! Listen, I know this hit you guys where you live, but this is a police problem, not a lifeguard problem. These kids are armed, so let us handle it, okay? Since when has that ever been an issue? When you guys took on rival Latino gangs in Season 2, you were using Baywatch headquarters as a holding cell. In fact, one of the guys in the gang here was in that episode too. I guess Eddie's boat program inspiration was a huge failure, and they all went back to a life of crime. It turns out this girl is Carlos's sister. See? The audience cares because this guy is an old friend of Mitch's and therefore not some random dude with magnificent hair we just met. He wants to take her back home and away from her unscrupulous friends, but the gang has other ideas. You think I'm afraid of you? What? Because you're a lifeguard? Ooh, not a lifeguard! The scariest of all professions! <laughs> I'm not scared of you either! Stay away from her. The following montage is a confusing combination of bumper cars and a men's shampoo commercial. Welcome to the real world. Welcome to the real world. And sexy Garner? <laughs> Weird how that one girl can teleport. Taking another turn out of nowhere, suddenly the music video is being shot like a romance. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Malibu where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. This calls for a beefcake intervention! Ooh, perfect landing. I have good hair, say it! She's my sister. I have a sister! Now I can make this about me! Well, I guess that's... huh? So his sister agreed to go back home off-screen then? Oh, that's swell, Baywatch. It's not like you spent half the episode on this non-dilemma. This guy hasn't had a role this good since he was the dream prince in Thunder in Paradise. <sighs> At least now he can return to the sea. Beefy McDreamboat reveals he feels guilty about his sister because he too used to be in a gang. As he says, it's kinda hard to be a saint growing up in the city. But things were a whole lot different back in his day. But the biggest difference is when we had a beef, we settled things with our fists. Now they use guns. Whoa there, Baywatch. Are you trying to claim that there was no gun violence in late 70s slash early 80s city gangs? But look, the gang stuff isn't important. What is important is that Stephanie thinks Captain Hare looks totally hot. Aw, oh, yeah! Dip me like one of your French girls! Okay! Oh, I guarantee you, the show will be exactly the same without Carlos next week. Meanwhile, CJ is being charmed by a local beach magician, the great Morani. It's a pleasure to meet you, CJ. You know what they say about a bird in the hand? It's worth two in the tower. 
Okay, that last part makes no sense unless he was, like, stalking her and has a buddy in there. You can even see the shadow from whoever was throwing the birds out. How long were they waiting for that cue? Anyway, Magician Dude is planning on performing a death-defying stunt in the water while looking like the biggest tool in the universe. So far, he's been successful. And I'm not gonna tell you how to do your job, dude, but I don't think your life is worth risking for an audience of 26. I also want to commend this small child's haircut. Not gonna lie, this stunt sucks. Once he jumps in the water, they can't see shit. It's just them staring at the ocean for six minutes. But besides that, his magic secret is hiding a key between his toes, which barely qualifies as a magic trick. And he fails at the one part of the trick by dropping the key. How bad is he at his job? You know, CJ, you could have just grabbed the other key from that lady's boobs and saved some time for yourself and the audience. They didn't notice the soul lifeguard take off and jump in after him? <coughs> Bullshit. Damn it, Shippy, this is why you don't belong on land. Ha <laughs> ha now you'll never be able to get off your tower. Go! <laughs> Carlos was right. This would never happen if it weren't for guns. <laughs> Mitch totally just takes him out with a car door. Stephanie wants Carlos to be transferred to Baywatch permanently, but Mitch says they can't afford more personnel and decides to make fun of her crush. The crush which, might I remind you, Mitch set up in the first place. But uh-oh, it turns out Carlos was hurt in the fight and will be out of commission for nine months. I'm gonna assume part of that was a hit to the head that made him forget his thing with Stephanie. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. He's not dead. Not dead. What an asshole! What? Next time on Baywatch, Baywatch hosts the Special Olympics. Don't stop believing.